Hi guys, thank you so much for joining me again. I'm Mrs. B and this is Art Life. Now today, stay tuned because I'll show you how to use some paper manipulation and construction techniques to create an awesome vase of three dimensional flowers. I'll show you four different style flowers here. Also how to cut and paste and put it all together to create a really beautiful, interesting and colorful artwork that you should be really proud of. For our paper construction task today, the first thing you're going to need is a whole bunch of colored pieces of paper. These can be scrap paper, they can be small, they can be big, as long as you're able to cut into them. That's all you'll need. You'll also need some glue and scissors to cut and paste with and something circular like a cup or something to trace around. Let's get started everybody. If you do need anything please check out the link below in the description because I've got lots of cool materials by Zart Art and there's also a discount code there for you. So the first thing we need to do for our collage today is to gather up some paper. Now I have some beautiful colored paper here, which I'm going to use. However, if you don't have colored paper, there's so many other alternatives. For one, you could create your own colored paper. If you only have white paper, you could paint it. You could use textures to create some patterns and designs like this. Use some lines. You could use some other patterns. You could use whatever you have around the house. For example, if all you have is an old magazine, you could use sections from the magazine to cut them out and create your collage as well. Even newspaper will work for this activity. Whatever paper you have will definitely work. I'm gonna show you some strategies now how to use paper creatively. So no matter what type of paper you have, you can adapt and use the type of strategies I'm showing you to create your own artwork. So the first thing you need is your backing piece of paper. That is your background and that is the piece of paper you're going to stick everything onto. Today I'm going to use a piece of really fantastic craft card. This is stocked by Zart Art um, and I love using it because it's uh, recycled paper and I think the brown looks really nice anyway. So this is what everything's going to go on to. We're gonna create our very own still life art made out of paper. And today I'm going to be doing a vase of flowers onto my backing paper here. And the first thing we're going to organize and work out is our vase. So before I do any cutting and pasting, the first thing I'm going to do is get a marker. I'm using purple today, but you guys might choose to use something different. You can use a black texture, you can use whatever you have. And about halfway down the paper, I'm just going to rule a straight line. Just like that. Now this straight line suggests a table or something for our vase to sit on. So the first thing we need to do is to create a bit of a vase that's going to sit onto our background here. Now I'm working on an A3 piece of paper. So I'm wanting to use an A4 piece of paper to create my vase. If you're working on A4, you're going to use a piece of paper that's half that size. We want our vase to be not too small so that it doesn't take up much space, but you also don't want it to be too big and take up our whole piece of paper. So I'm going to use this part of my paper and I'm only gonna use half of it. All you need is a simple sort of cylinder like this that takes up about this amount of space on your background. So again, if you're working smaller, you will have a smaller sort of vase. Okay, now what I wanna do is decorate the vase. It looks a bit plain and boring right now. Um, so what you could do is use your collage skills to cut out some designs. I might do some stripes. You could do spots by cutting out lots of circles. You could cut out diamonds. You could cut out different shapes. But this task is all about collage and paper manipulation. 
So see if you can come up with a really fantastic and original idea to decorate your vase and make it really interesting. All right, so I've cut some strips. And I'm now going to glue my strips in a nice pattern onto my vase. An important skill to learn when doing collage is not just your cutting skills, but also your pasting skills. When I teach my kids at school, I find a lot of them don't use enough glue. And so whatever you're sticking on will fall off only in a matter of time. So it's important to use quite a lot of glue. Notice that I'm using my glue separate to my artwork. If I had, if I do this, I'm going to get glue all over my art. So I'm using my glue stick to the side so that I keep my artwork as neat as possible. Cool. I'm happy with that design, but it needs a bit of a trim. Now remember guys, I see my role here as just trying to inspire you to create an artwork of your own. So please have a go at creating something different to what I've shown you here. Um, I hope that you can use your own creativity, which means coming up with new ideas. So we're going to then do a little fold on this side of the vase and on this side of the vase. because we're make, gonna make it three-dimensional and pop out from our artwork here. So I'm gonna put quite a bit of glue on this fold here and on this fold as well. And when I stick it on, I'm gonna stick one side down like this, press it down nice and, nice and tight. And then I'm not going to stick this one flat. I'm going to keep it so that it sort of sticks up a little bit and it's tricky to get in there. We have to kind of press it down. Can you see that? It's sticking out from my page. A bit of a 3D vase. It makes it look rounded like a cylinder rather than flat. Now we're going to have a go at creating some different flowers to go inside the vase. I'm going to be showing you four different types of ways to create flowers today using different construction, paper construction methods. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is grab our paper for our very first flower. And we also need to grab the circular object that you're going to use to trace around. We need to make sure that the sizing is correct. If you do choose something too small, it's gonna get very fiddly. So just the size of a cup or small bowl will work quite well. So the first thing you're going to do is trace around your circle to reveal a very nice circle just there. And I'm gonna cut him out. Practice your cutting skills. This is what this task is all about today. So if you're rushing this, the artwork will look rushed. So take your time to try to cut on the line as best you can. Wonderful. Now what you're going to do is choose a different colored piece of paper. Now I might choose a piece of paper that I've, I've decorated here. You can choose to use a plain piece of paper if you prefer. And now I'm going to have a go at just cutting a smaller circle. You might choose to draw the circle first to help you. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Otherwise you can use a smaller sort of template. There, that's gonna go in the middle. Then I'm going to repeat that process by cutting an even smaller circle. What I'm hoping you're going to learn today is that collage is all about layering. If I had have just used the one circle, I'm sure it would be a lovely artwork, but it's not going to be overly interesting. But in adding other layers, it makes my artwork look more interesting, more dynamic, and it obviously uses more skills. So I'm going to use my glue now 
to stick those in place. We're not sticking our flower down yet though, we're gonna keep that separate. There's one lucky last thing we need to do. What I'm gonna do now is fringe the sides or around my circle here. Fringing is a paper cutting technique where you cut in straight parallel lines and it almost looks like, if you imagine, having a fringe of hair in front of your face. In doing that, it's making it look like my flower has individual petals. When I'm cutting, I'm cutting as straight as I can and I'm going all the way to this second layer here and stopping. Notice I'm making my petals quite detailed in that I'm cutting quite close together. If you cut far away from each other, it will look a little bit different. The petals will be a lot bigger. Fantastic. Now I'm just going to use my hands to sort of curl my flower up a bit. I'm using my two hands to sort of push the flowers so the petal, petals kind of come up like that and it pops out from the page. There, that's our first flower completed. If you'd like to, you can actually go back in and use some crayons or pencils or textures to add even more detail. I'm always thinking about what can I add to my artwork to make it even more interesting. And patterns and lines are the way to do that sometimes. There, that's flower number one. We can put that to the side because we're not gonna stick them on to our background until the very, very end. Okay, this time we're going to use the circle that we have again. But this time I'm going to trace it twice. And I'll cut these out. All right, I'm left with two circles. I'm gonna put them together and then actually cut right through the middle. That's creating four semicircles. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold in a zigzag kind of motion each of my semicircles here. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to fold this way and then I'm gonna fold the other way. I'm gonna fold this way, then I'm gonna fold the other way. In doing that, when you open it, your petal should look bumpy like this, almost like a zigzag line. I'll do that again so I can show you. All right, folding that way, and now I'm gonna fold under. Folding on top, folding under, folding on top. Sort of see the flower coming to life now. On a second coloured piece of paper, I'm now going to cut another circle. Now notice I've traced around my large sort of template here, but this circle is too big. We want the circle to fit inside the flower here. So I'm going to use this sort of shape as an idea, but I'm going to make it, cut into it and make it a bit smaller. The only reason I traced it was just so that I could give myself an idea of how big the circle needs to be. There. This is gonna to come together to make our second flower. But what I might do is just fringe around the outside again. Now, I actually want the inside to be a darker color. So I'm actually going to colour in some white paper now using a grey texture. Again, cutting out another layer. I'm going to fringe that one as well. Fantastic. Now, when we glue these petals down, we will be able to glue them directly onto the background, but for now, we just need to keep them safe and keep them to the side, because we won't stick it all down until the very end. All right, that was our second flower style. 
The third one, we need another piece of paper. And this time we're going to use the shape of a love heart. So I've drawn my love heart there. And I'm gonna cut it out. And when I do more, I'm actually gonna trace around my first love heart and use it as a bit of a template. I'm gonna trace around it four times to end up with four love hearts that are the same size. If you were just to draw them individually, it's very likely they would be some big ones, some small ones, and it wouldn't quite work together as a flower. So this way I have five, flat, five love hearts that are all the same size. Great, now notice one of the sides has my texture mark on it and the other is clean. So we wanna see the clean side facing up on our artwork. I'm now gonna fold each of my love hearts sticking up like that, just in the middle. You can see this flower is coming together nicely too. Now we need another piece of paper where we're gonna cut a small circle just to act as the middle. And we'll glue that down later. All right, that was number three. Our fourth and lucky last one is I'm going to actually cut some strips of paper that sort of look a little bit like that. I need quite a few of them, so try your best to cut in straight parallel lines. So the idea is that we don't get bigger like this or smaller like this. We want our our lines to be nice and straight, even if it means ruling with a ruler and cutting along a line, if that helps you, you can do that. All right, I think I have about seven there. That's, that's probably enough, seven or eight is a good amount of strips. And I also want another two circles, kind of like this, um, to act as the middle. stick my smaller circle to my bigger circle here and that's going to act as the middle of this flower okay so we have our four one two three four flowers ready to stick on to our background cool so now it's time to stick on our flowers I have the four different styles you can choose wherever you want them to go but notice that because I've done everything quite large, there probably is only room for four within my artwork here. If you wanted to come up with a fifth style or repeat one of the ones I've shown you, you could put one down here on the table. All right, well, this one is ready to just glue down. Use lots of glue and he can go there. Now for your little hearts, you're just gonna put a little bit of glue on the tip there. And when you stick them, sort of want them to still stick up a little bit. A little bit of glue here. Sort of overlapping, because you have five of them, so you should be able to have them overlap and stick up a little bit. Now this little circle, lots of glue there, he can go in the middle. If you're finding your fingers are getting a bit sticky, might be time to just go wash and dry your hands because if your fingers have glue all over them, it's very hard to stick things down. All right, I'm gonna do this blue guy now. And when I stick these down, you might've thought that I'm sticking them like that, but I'm not going to. I'm actually going to fold them over in a loop like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of glue on the bottom here and then press the other side to it and then put a little bit of glue down the bottom and stick it down. I'm going to arrange them around like that. Told you it would be sticky. Good. 
Now this guy needs some glue, quite a bit of it. That goes right in the middle there. Okay, the lucky last one. This is the trickiest one of the lot. So what we're gonna do is put a row of glue down the long kind of line of the semicircle here. Quite a bit of it. We're gonna to try to stick it down in a bunchy kind of way like that. If you can, you can see that it sort of bunches up like a petal. Now when it's time to stick this middle part in, you sort of have to push down the folds so that they're not sticking up so much that you can't stick this middle circle down. You can see that they're still three dimensional, but they're sort of just being pressed down a little bit so that this middle one can stick down. It's okay if it's sticking up on the sides a little bit, but from what you can see there, it is still three, three dimensional. Okay, so now up to the final step of our beautiful paper manipulation task, and that is creating stems for our four flowers here coming out of the vase. Now, the simplest option would be to get a green texture and draw the stems. However, today we're not doing what is simplest. We're not doing what is easiest. We are learning about paper manipulation, cutting and pasting skills. So that is what we're gonna do for the stems as well. So I'm grabbing a green piece of paper to create the stems. If you don't have a green piece of paper, remember you can create a green piece of paper by coloring in a white piece of paper with green. You might find green sections within a magazine, things like that. Or you could be abstract and just use um, a different color that you choose. So when it comes to the stems, we want our artwork to make sense. So these two here are fairly straightforward. We'll just get a nice straight piece of green paper. But for these two here, we might need to get a sort of a bent piece of paper like that. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just gonna cut a nice straight line there. So this one will be for this orange flower. This one here will be for my blue flower. And this one, I'm gonna sort of make my stem bend like this. See what I mean there? I'm gonna do the same thing for this guy. Wonderful. They all need to be glued down, but I'm gonna quickly show you how to create a three-dimensional leaf. So if you cut your leaf shape, give it a tiny fold like this. I'm gonna put some glue in between where I folded it. Like that. You sort of have to press it for a little while. Just to add more detail to my work, I've repeated this flower here and I'm going to chuck one down there as if it had fallen off onto the floor. Finished. All right, because I can't help myself and because I have such wonderful products from a wonderful company called Zart, I'm going to add even more detail to my flowers here. I have a whole bunch of really cool buttons. It's just like a big mixture of buttons. So I could stick those in just to create some extra three-dimensional interest and make my artwork even more exciting. So buttons don't generally stick with a glue stick. 
they're a little bit heavier and uh, thicker. So what I suggest is grabbing a set of super tack. This is extra strong glue and it's not too um, expensive. PVA is really runny, but this is actually a lot thicker, which makes it a lot easier to work with. So all you need to do is grab a tiny little bit. You don't need much on the back there. Oops, place it down and it will dry clear. It will take about 24 hours to set. So um, please try and keep your artwork nice and flat until it's nice and dry. Okay, now I think I'm done. <laughs> So it's as simple as that. I really hope that you've enjoyed using your cutting and pasting skills today to create a really cool vase of flowers and that you've been able to create something that you're happy with and you feel you've learned a little bit about how to use paper. There's so many different ways that you can put paper together to create an artwork that is as gorgeous as this one. Make sure that you take some photos and tag me at Art Life Art Lessons on Facebook or at artlife.melb on Instagram because I'd love to see what you're doing at home. Also, please subscribe below and give me a thumbs up if you've liked the video. Thanks for joining me.